Hey guys, hope you are having a good day. My name is Sava Prasad, and as you know, I have brought to you this series on science and technology current affairs. It's basically a mini series that means I'm going to take up a small topic and I'm going to discuss them in these short videos. So it's presented by me, Sava Prasad. So today I'm going to take up an interesting topic. As you know, UPSC has asked a lot of questions around space technology and space related exploration missions of ISRO and other countries. So today I am going to take up seven mega missions that have been planned by Indian Space Research Organization that is ISRO. Okay, so ISRO has planned to conduct these seven missions in the next 10 years. So what are these missions? What are the names? What are the different kind of characteristics about this mission? What kind of information do we have? So that will be captured in the next few minutes. So stay tuned. So the seven mega missions that are planned by ISRO. ISRO has planned seven big missions to be conducted over a period of 10 years. Maybe because of the COVID-19 crisis, they might not be able to stick to this commitment. But nevertheless, this is the overall ambition of ISRO for the next 10 years. There are two defined missions. So where a lot of information related to them are available. One happens to be ExpoSat. Right. I'll explain all of them. Next happens to be Aditya L1 mission. Okay. So in a separate video, following this video, I will be discussing the details of Aditya L1 mission, Lagrangian point, what is special about this, are there similar missions to study the sun. So we'll also be talking about the Parker solar probe and about the sun itself. Right. So these two are defined missions. While the other missions that are at the planning stage, they happen to be Mangalyaan 2, Venus mission, that is Shukrayaan 1, then we have Lunar Polar Exploration, and then there is another mission we are launching, it's going to be called as ExoWorld. The names might eventually change, but nevertheless, these are in the planning stages as of now. So let's start with ExpoSat. Okay. ExpoSat stands for X-ray Polarimeter Satellite. Okay. So let's talk more about ExpoSat. This is a planned space observatory to study the polarization of cosmic X-rays. Okay, so I hope you know you're aware about the electromagnetic spectrum. So from 400 to 700 nanometer approximately, we have what we call as the visible range, visible range of frequencies or visible range of range of wavelengths where we are able to see. Right. So for example, you know this is blue color. Then right now it's going to be red color, etc. So this is within this narrow range then after that if you go further you have infrared etc and if you go to the left hand side you would get for example gamma rays then you will have x-rays so our idea is to study the universe in the x-ray range of frequency imagine clicking pictures uh, in the x-ray region all right so that's what we are going to do so it's a planned space observatory what do we mean by a space observatory okay let me just add a slide so you might have seen something like this you have this huge telescopes. These are all called as ground based observatories. Okay. So there are certain limitations to the ground based observatories. For example, there could be cloud cover, then there could be something called as light pollution. Because of these reasons, these ground based observatories are not very effective. So what we are launching, we are launching a space observatory. So that means in the lower earth orbit, we are going to put these satellites which are capable of doubling or performing the functions of a satellite. And this is uh, functionings of a telescope. So this is not just any kind of normal telescope. This is a telescope which will help us observe the universe in the X-ray range of frequencies. Okay. The telescope, remember, it is being developed by ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization and Raman Research Institute in Bangalore. And this will be placed in lower Earth orbit. Right. So that's what, as I told you, this is going to be placed into the space. It will be launched in 2021. This is the plan. As of now but let's see what happens eventually when more details are available i will definitely make a separate lesson and discuss more about this and the idea is to study the nature of polarization of radiations this will help us understanding the source for example this is your satellite and imagine it is picking up some radiations right so this will help us understand the polarization of these radiations what will this effectively tell you it tells you about the source for example imagine there's a star that is emitting this so we can know more about this star for example the temperature of the star the composition of the star how far this star is and the, there are many kind of other cosmological bodies we are still discovering remember we hardly know four percent of our entire universe right 96 percent of the universe is still shrouded in mystery so by understanding the polarization of such objects we would be able to get a better understanding okay so that's the idea and exposat will study 50 brightest known sources in the universe Okay, so this will include pulsars, black holes, X-ray binaries, active galactic nuclei 
and non thermal supernova remnant what these are i will discuss in separate videos all right so this is exposat this is one of the first mission that's on the planning table of isro then the second one happens to be aditya l1 as i told you i will make a separate video explaining to you what is this l1 that is this lagrangian one and more about the structure of the sun and what aditya l1 would like to find out so i'll just give you a brief idea right now this is isro isro's first scientific expedition to study the sun okay this is our first we have not launched anything earlier than this initially aditya one it was conceived to be a 400 kg mini satellite with one payload that is it was supposed to be placed in this 800 km lower earth orbit and the idea was to study the sun's corona okay so sun's corona means if you see the sun you might have seen this outer part right like this this extends to millions and millions of kilometers okay this is called as the solar corona all right it's called as the corona one interesting thing about the corona is that you will see that the corona is hotter than the surface of the sun itself so it's uh, the temperature measurement of corona is hotter than the sun itself uh, hotter than the core of the sun itself so what is the mystery behind this we are still trying to understand there are very little things we know about the sun even though that happens to be the closest star in our solar system so such missions for example like solar parker probe or aditya l1 mission will give us a better insight into the functionalities or in, into the mechanisms behind the sun all right so the idea initial idea was to study the solar corona right now the uh, you know idea is going to get expanded the satellite if placed in the halo orbit around point l1 will provide a continuous view of the sun without oscillation and eclipse okay so this particular place we are going to place this aditya l1 this l1 it basically stands for lagrangian point okay i will explain more in the next video with that i'll be making on aditya l1 what is this l1 why are we targeting this l1 what are these lagrangian points how many of them are there what is special about these points i will focus in the next lesson okay so this was aditya 1 later this aditya 1 it was revived as aditya l1 with increased the capacity of six payloads earlier we were only sending one payload that means one instrument on board of aditya 1 now we have decided let's send six payloads six instruments and the idea has been expanded we are obviously going to study the outermost layer of the sun that is corona other than that we will be studying the photosphere the chromosphere solar winds solar flares and coronal mass ejections and this will also have a round the clock imaging of the sun that means 24/7 it will be taking pictures of the sun okay this is the idea of aditya l1 right so aditya 1 has been scrapped instead we have this aditya l1 or rather aditya 1 has been upgraded to aditya l1 okay it's not only going to study the solar corona but the other parts of the sun as well i will make a detailed video in the next step, okay aditya l1 will be launched using the polar satellite launch vehicle that is pslv xl right sometimes upsc has a habit of just switching this they will just say gslv mark 3 that is going to be used so you obviously know it's going to be launched using a pslv xl okay with seven payloads or seven instruments on board and this will be placed in this l1 instead of the lower earth orbit earlier the idea was to place it in the lower earth orbit later we said let's do it in this halo orbit around this point that is called as the lagrangian point l1 okay other than this what is the third mission that is still in the planning stage it is going to be mangalyaan 2 so just like we have chandrayaan 2 that was recently launched and unfortunately we lost communication with the vikram lander so like that chandrayaan 2 we also have plans for mangalyaan 2 mangalyaan 2 or mars orbiter mission 2 this is india's second interplanetary mission what is the first interplanetary mission that was mangalyaan 1 all right this is going to be the second time we are going to get to mars the proposed launch vehicle is gslv mac3 so as of now we believe that we will be using a gslv mac3 launch vehicle for launching this mangalyaan right to mars why mars see mars is being explored for emergence of primitive life as its geomorphological features suggest an early wet and warm so we believe that at one point of time life might be possible on mars so what we are looking for right now are signatures or signs of a primitive life how was life billions of years ago on the planet right that's what we are trying to find out as well as it has also experienced processes similar to that existing on earth during the formation and evolution so this is the reason we are constantly investigating the other planets the main idea is to understand more about ourselves okay mars missions provide an opportunity to address questions regarding planetary evolutionary processes how have we evolved how has life evolved on earth that again happens to be a biggest mystery right we have put so many pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together but there is so much that we still do not know so to try to find more about this 
we are sending such missions to Mars and other planets. Moreover, previous missions have provided direct evidence for the presence of hydrated minerals on the exposed surface and the presence of water ice at subsurface regions. Okay, so looking at the previous evidences we have acquired, so we believe Mangalyaan 2 is something that is imperative at this kind of stage. Okay, there is also proof of existence of methane, it has been proposed. Okay, if methane is proposed, one of the sources of methane happens to be biological. So this can tell us about the early life that is possible on Mars. Right? So as I told you, that will help us understand more about ourselves, how life evolved, how our own planet has evolved. The next, interestingly, we have planned a mission to Venus. Okay, it's a Venus mission. It's called as Shukrayaan One. It is proposed to be an orbital mission. Orbital mission means if this is Venus, so our satellite will basically orbit around Venus. It will click pictures of the Venus, etc. Okay, so that's what an orbiter basically means. It's a proposed orbiter mission to Venus by ISRO. The idea is to study the surface and the atmosphere of Venus. Okay, and remember for many reasons. Venus is often described as the twin sister. Why? Because if you compare Earth and Venus, there are a lot of similarities. For example, size of Venus, it's very similar to that of the Earth. Mass of Venus, density of Venus, the bulk composition of Venus and the gravity of Venus. All these things, if you compare, they are so comparable to that of the Earth, right? That is the reason we often call Venus as the twin sister of Earth. It is believed that both planets share a common origin, right? They form pretty much at the same time by condensing gas clouds around 4.5 billion years old. It's over there also. This is another reason, okay, we are interested in Venus. Venus, and remember, is the hottest planet in the solar system, okay. A lot of people think it is Mercury because it is closest to the sun, that it is the hottest planet. That is completely a wrong answer. The hottest planet in the solar system, remember, is Venus. The main reason why Venus is the hottest planet and not Mercury, that is because Mercury does not have an atmosphere. It gets hot and equally quickly it gets cooled also. Why? Because of lack of presence of atmosphere. But remember, in comparison to Mercury, Venus has a very thick atmosphere, especially of carbon dioxide. This sort of forms a blanket. So therefore, greenhouse effect takes place. So that means whatever heat that is falling onto Venus is getting trapped within that atmosphere because of greenhouse effect that is taking place. That is from the high concentrations of carbon dioxide and because of a thick atmosphere. This is another reason because of the thick atmosphere, Venus is often referred to as the veiled planet. Okay, it's a veiled planet. Why? Because you cannot see the planet. It has such a thick layer of atmosphere, right? And it happens to be the hottest planet in the solar system. The next mission is planned, that is Lunar Polar Exploration Mission. Okay. This is a robotic lunar mission conceptualized by ISRO and JAXA, that is Japan Aerospace exploration agency okay so this is important why because india is collaborating with an external space agency in this case japan space agency similarly you might have heard about this nisar you can find out more about this this is a collaboration between isro and nasa okay like this these such kind of questions have also been asked so try to remember this like this lunar polar exploration mission is by collaboration between isro and japan aerospace exploration agency so the idea is to send a lunar rover and lander to explore the south pole region of the moon in 2024. Okay, this is planned for 2024 and not only are we going to send an orbit, the idea is to send a rover and a lander. Remember, Chandrayaan 2 not only was in our orbiter, it also had a lander and a rover. Right? For example, the lander's name was Vikram. Unfortunately, we lost communication touch with this. Right? That's what this sort of to prove our soft land landing capabilities so over here also in this lunar polar exploration mission we are not only launching an orbiter we are launching rover and a lander the lunar south pole that is where we are sending this mission to the lander and rover they would be made to land in this lunar south pole region okay this is of special interest to the scientists because of the occurrence of water ice in permanently shadowed areas around. Okay, so this is what makes it very special why because Water ice in is, is you know is occurring over there in permanently shadowed areas. Okay, in this place, the lunar south pole region it features craters that are unique in that the near constant sunlight does not reach there. So it's unique for many craters. So a lot of things could be uncovered about the moon if we can start studying the south pole region. Such craters are cold traps that contain fossil records of hydrogen, 
water, ice, and other volatiles dating from the early solar system, right? Why are we interested in these craters? We believe that within these craters, a lot of gases could be trapped, for example, hydrogen, right? Water, ice could be trapped, and many other such volatile, you know, elements could also be trapped. So that is what we would like to understand. So capturing signature of these gases, etc., will tell us about the early solar system, okay? We would like to know the evolutionary process by such studies. Then we have Chandrayaan program, also known as Indian Lunar Exploration Program. Okay. It's an ongoing series of outer space missions by the Indian Space Research Organization. This had Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2 that was recently launched and the latest one that is being conceived that is Chandrayaan 3. Remember Chandrayaan 1? This was launched on 22nd October 2008 about PSLV XL rocket. This was already asked in prelims examination. This was a big success for ISRO as the moon impact probe. Okay, this was basically a payload or an instrument on board Chandrayaan 1. Okay, and also second aspect was moon water was discovered. On. Okay, remember using the data that was captured from Chandrayaan 1, Brown University in United States of America, they were able to make a map. Okay, this is the lunar water map. That's what they called as it's lunar water map. Okay, so basically they were able to follow trends. For example, they found that if this is the moon and this is the equator, as you move away from the equator towards either of the poles, they saw that the concentration of water was increasing. Okay, so such things, the signature of water, it was increasing as you move towards the pole. Such trends were identified using the data from Chandrayaan. Okay, then Chandrayaan 2 that was recently in the news, it was launched on 22nd July 2019. This was about a GSLV Mac 3 rocket. Okay, try to remember this. This is of recent, as you can see, it's only 22nd July 2019, not so long ago. The spacecraft was successfully put into the lunar orbit on August 20, 2019, right? So that means if this is the moon, we successfully placed this satellite on the orbit, right? But unfortunately, the lander that was ejected, right? This lander was supposed to make a soft landing on the surface of the moon. The lander was lost while attempting to land on 6th September 2019. The orbiter, however, is operational. So this orbiter, it will revolve around the moon it will collect a lot of scientific data and it is expected to function for the next 7.5 years this is called as the lifetime of the mission right then we have chandrayaan 3 this has been proposed by isro as a re-attempt to demonstrate the landing capabilities which is needed for isro and japan's lunar polar exploration program okay i just explained this to you for this ISRO has to prove its soft landing capabilities and as I told you with Vikram lander our soft landing capabilities has not yet been very well established. So we would like to show our landing capabilities. So that is the reason Chandrayaan 3 will also have a lander and a rover. Alright. And then finally the last mission that we will discuss is Exo World mission. Okay. This is a proposed mission for exoplanets. What are exoplanets? Remember these are any planets that are not a part of our solar system. That means these are planets that are a part of a different solar system. That means these are planets that are revolving around a different sun, around a sun that is not our own sun. Such planets are called as exoplanets. Okay, and this exo world mission of ISRO is a proposed mission for studying exoplanets, for studying planets that are orbiting a different sun. It is proposed to be launched in 2025 to find the possibility of evolution of life on exoplanets. Okay, as I told you, exoplanet is any planet beyond our solar system. Any planet that is revolving around the sun that is not our own. The first exoplanet, remember, it was discovered in 1995. So if they tell you statements like in 2010 or recently, ISRO was the first to discover, etc. So that's a wrong statement. In the 1990s itself, we have already discovered the first exoplanet. Okay, you don't have to remember the names of the exoplanets also because they have very, very weird names. For example, if you see Elon Musk, he has named the sun. In a very weird manner so like this weird names are given for these exoplanets so you don't have to remember them until unless something is very special about these exoplanets all right so i would conclude this lesson you know so we have discussed the seven mega missions that has been or will be eventually launched and planned by indian space research organization over a period of the next 10 years in the next lesson i will take up aditya l1 in detail we will understand the mission we will also talk about the structure of the sun so this is all for now. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.